Hi there, everybody. How's it going? I wanted to go over a lower extremity arterial a protocol, but I wanted to do a, a case first that's on a, on a premature infant, which uh, makes it harder because their vessels are a lot smaller. You know, they're millimeters. It's pretty much the same protocol, even if it was an adult. Also, this case has some findings of thrombus. So this is a newborn premature baby with congenital heart defects, had a catheterization, and he also had a femoral arterial line. So to start, we... Uh, I use, scanning these babies, I use uh, the, the little curved high resolution probe, same one you would use for a brain. And all, uh, once I get to the extremities, I use the higher resolution, 18 megahertz, what we call the hockey stick. It's shaped like a little L. We begin in the abdomen from the baby's side on a coronal plane. You can begin mid uh, midline sagittal. A lot of times these babies have umbilical lines and a bunch of um, dressings and bandages in their abdomen as well. But if you want to get the bifurcation, uh, you want to come in from a coronal view. So this is coronal from the right. So this is the baby's right. The baby's left will be over here. And here you see most of the mid to distal aorta and then the bifurcation. Uh, there's some low level echoes here. That's just artifact. All right. So you can put color Doppler, power Doppler, or um, the GE has the B flow, which really outlines the vessels very cleanly. So here again, you can see the aorta. And the bifurcations into the right and left common iliac artery. Remember, this this is the right side of the baby. You're scanning from the right, so this would be the right common iliac artery. Here it is with color. Fills in nicely with red. Uh, this part of the the left common iliac artery is going away from the transducer. It's going to be encoded in blue. And then we begin with the the, the spectral tracing. When you're doing uh, lower extremity arterials, you want to see. Um, at least from the distal aorta, and especially from the iliacs down, a triphasic waveform. Um, on these babies, you got to keep in mind that a lot of them have patent ductus arteriosus. Um, some of them have uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome, um, aortic regurgitation, many, many problems that, that's going to change your waveform. So you can have a normal um, our arteries all the way down and still not have perfect triphasic waveform. You can have a lot of diastolic flow, there's aortic regurgitation, or patent ductus arteriosus. So, but this waveform is pretty good. The velocity is a little bit above 50. Then you go transverse. And here you have your aorta and your IVC. You want to use, here if you use a linear, I mean, if you have any obstruction, you use a linear and you get a clearer pictures. Uh, but you definitely need something with high res. If you're at, you know, if you're using 3 megahertz, you're going to have a hard time um, delineating these vessels. So with color, you got the aorta and the IVC. And this is another coronal view. Here you can already see that on the, on the left common iliac artery, it's looking a little thinner than the right. Um, that, you know, that could be positional. But in this case, he did have some problems uh, in the external iliac artery, so we'll get there. All right, so here you got your right and the left. Again with the B-flow. You see it's filling up very nicely, so no thrombus. Even if you had a little thrombus on the wall, this B flow will really outline that. So this is a good technique to use. Um, it's you know harder on on bigger people, but if you're doing pediatrics, it's a very very good technique. Although on thin adults, it'll work, it'll work very well too. So here in the right common iliac artery, you have what looks like a a good nice triphasic waveform. Uh, this spectral tracing is pretty noisy. This patient was on um on a breathing machine and CPAP and uh, you know a lot of a lot of those things create a lot of artifacts so you try to adjust the the waveforms as much as you can to get a clear tracing all right then the left common iliac artery I'm taking it from the the right side of the abdomen um, so I have to invert it but here you got a pretty good waveform and they're they're pretty equal all right and then the left common iliac artery in transverse now i've switched to the 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 linear 18 megahertz transducer and here's the left common iliac artery in sagittal here you got some bowel that's going to be always be a problem when you're doing the common iliacs you got some some bowel with air and then shadowing so here is very clean, and then you have your bifurcation into in external iliac artery and internal iliac artery. See there, the bowel moved a little bit, so now you're getting a clearer view. It's filling up very nicely with color, left common iliac artery. Then you put your, your spectral waveform 
see, it's still it's got a nice tri triphasic waveform. It's had a little bit above 60 um, centimeters per second. And then here, again, is the bifurcation a, a little clearer. And you already start seeing this here. That's real. That's thrombus that's extending from the external iliac artery into the bifurcation here. This is the internal iliac artery. I'll have a, I have a clip in real time to show you. All right here's a little closer. You can definitely see if this vessel was open, it would be just a little bit smaller than this one, but as clear. And then with color, you can see it fills fills in the common iliac, the left internal iliac, but the external iliac artery does not fill. So it's filled with thrombus. And here again, you can see common iliac, external iliac with the thrombus extending into it. You put some special uh, Doppler on it, and you're not going to get any flow. Um, here's the femoral artery region. This is the femoral artery. You can see there's thrombus inside of it. This is the femoral vein. This is a central catheter, a pick line. Put color in that region. You can see the, the vessel fills up with color except for the where the, the catheter is. And then the artery does not fill with color. This patient had a catheterization on this side and also had a, uh, a femoral line in, which they removed prior to the study. And here's the sagittal. So here's your common femoral artery filled with thrombus. All right, you put Doppler on it and you're getting a little blip here. But uh, as I scanned it, I wasn't really picking up any good spectral waveforms. So that could be uh, maybe some early recanalization. The body itself, even without treatment, will start to uh, clear these thrombus or thrombi. Okay, spectral waveform showed no flow. All right, now we've reached the superficial femoral artery. It's right here, again filled with clot. Here's the femoral vein, again with a line. Picking up a little flow, but there's no clot in there. There is definitely clot in the, in the artery. And then in sagittal, here you see the, the, the artery filled with clot. Once you get to this region, you have some dropout of the signal. That's because the patient had a um, dressing for, where the, for the pick line. So you're not going to get any any information there. Again, with color, for a little blip of flow there. Though there, I, you, you, I doppler it and you can start to see some, some flow. So this flow is very low. This is five centimeters per second. So it's under 10 centimeters per second, very low, dampened flow. And then this is the mid to distal. Uh, keep in mind, these babies are very small. Uh, even with this tiny transducer, you can get pretty much common femoral artery all the way down to the distal in one image. So I zoom up a lot just to focus on, on the sections that I'm paying attention to. So I filled up nicely with color. Um, this is from recanalization. There's other little vessels that will, that will take charge and, and fill these vessels up um, via collaterals. Even though it's filling up nicely, here you have the femoral vein under it. It's filling up nicely. The flow is still very low. It's just above five uh, centimeters per second. Not very much. Uh, you know, this baby's at rest. They're not going to be, uh, you know, using their, their legs for, for much of anything. So the risk of, you know, uh, necrosis is, is not as high as if it was an adult that's walking around. However, they still can experience uh, ischemia and necrosis of their limbs. All right, here's transverse of the popliteal region, sagittal. Sagittal grayscale and sagittal with color, filling them nicely but you see the, the flow is going to be also very low, just above five centimeters per second. All right, then the posterior tibial artery, you can see it right here. And then usually the posterior tibial artery is going to be um, flanked on either side by the posterior tibial veins. I have my scale set up high to uh, reduce artifact, so you, I'm not picking up the, the venous flow. But the, the artery is filling up nicely. Doppler it, less than five centimeters per second, very low flow, monophasic. So these are definitely changes you see post stenosis or post obstruction. And then I did the right common from artery for comparison. Very nice flow, about 60 centimeters per second plus. Um, the dorsalis pedis artery I did not scan because the baby also had a, a dressing on that foot. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to show you this, this quick protocol. Um, these protocols, you can add it to anybody. No matter how old or how young the patient is, you can scan their arterial system as long as they don't have anomalous vessels or prior surgeries. And you can follow this protocol all the way down segmentally. 
you know, sagittal with grayscale, color, spectral waves, all the way down. But I wanted to show you on a very small baby how you can uh, also do this exam. It can be a little difficult. Uh, this baby was was intubated and sedated, so it was not that hard because they're not moving. But we also have to do these on older babies, and they can be kicking and screaming, and it's it can be very difficult because they're not compliant like an older patient would do. So thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more videos in the future. <laughs>